Apple unveils first hints of Siri Pro at the iPad Pro event. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the All Future Podcast. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, give us a shot, man. Give us a shot. We like to talk about tech here in hopefully a slightly different way than the average tech channel because uh, we're just not into the lame stuff. We're talking about the big stuff. We're talking mm -hmm. about the big stuff. We're talking about how AI is going to run humanity um, and really big things that seem almost impossible like an improved Siri. <laughs> that does seem impossible at this <laughs> the point, The holy grail it? of technology, a Siri that works effectively. And today we are, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half, two hours after the end of Apple's iPad event. Mm -hmm. Kind of fresh in our minds right now. We've been kind of discussing it. And I think it does maybe tip Apple's hand a little to what they're thinking with AI, what they're thinking with Siri Pro. Let's get into it. So what, what do you think about the event? What do you think is going on here? What's the big takeaways? Well... I think it definitely satisfied most of what we we're looking for. I think those new iPad Pros are really exciting. The new iPad Air 13 inch is really exciting. And then they showed off a few AI features that are especially driven by the new M4 chip. Mm -hmm. So this is the first, one of the first situations I think where we're really seeing them give that obvious leap that you're gonna want this chip because of this neural engine that's inside of it that they detailed. And they showed off, I think in Final Cut Pro 2, which mm -hmm. is new. They showed off background removal, automatic background removal being built in, and they do it super quickly on the iPad. Mm -hmm. That's a cool thing that could definitely come. I mean, I think it will come, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. They even released a press release saying these things are coming to the Mac mm -hmm. as well as the iPad. And then on Logic, there's some more music stuff. There's some more AI instruments. And then there's AI features like stem separation. So you take a track that's just a stereo track and it's able to figure it out and parse those out. But then what else could you see coming from that M4? Was there more at the event that you saw? A little bit. I think they're playing a little close to the vest because they want to save the big news for WWDC, mm -hmm. right? You know, they really stress the... Uh, neural engine aspect of the uh, these chips, you know, they show the little graphic and you see all the little components of it and stuff like that. They're they're kind of showing all the benefits that this M4 is going to bring, and I think we saw how uh, at least a little hint of how Apple is going to sell people on Apple. AI, mm -hmm. which is look at this cool feature, man. Like, look at this cool feature. And really, if you look at you know what they showed with the Final Cut and with the uh, logic side, they just kind of briefly mention the AI thing. And it's really, we're like, oh, it's using AI to do this. And it like showed you the flashy thing mm -hmm. and didn't really lean too hard into AI, 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 you know, <laughs> like, like yeah. that sort of thing, which is you would just see some other manufacturers do. And I th think that's what's going to happen as we're going to see this in WWC mm -hmm. when they're saying like, because a thing we didn't see today is the new iPad OS at all. Yeah. yeah despite the, the new hardware. So there's got to be, ways the new OS is going to be leveraging these chips um, and their AI abilities. Uh, the other thing, though, is that Apple did kind of change the languaging a little. They didn't say, like, machine learning, for example, when they were talking about the stems, or you know, in, in Logic. Mm -hmm. They said, oh, here's this AI player, I guess, or for lack of a better term, AI musician, I guess, that, mm -hmm. that it can actually have. So I think, yeah, like that that seems to be at least a little hint of where they're going with this, which is really more of a feature first approach and not here's this technology and we don't know where it's going to go approach, which if you look at maybe what NVIDIA is doing, they're saying like, hey, here's all this raw power we got. You guys figure out what you can do with it. Yeah. Whereas Apple is kind of like, here's this cool feature that this is enabling. And that's really what's going to sell units. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have to figure out why I'm going to care, why mm -hmm. I'm going to spend what is a thousand dollars on an iPad. Mm -hmm. um, but another AI feature that they detailed that I think really gives us a hint is it was just a document scanner, but it's mm -hmm. using the adaptive True Tone Flash on the iPad. Great way to remember all the marketing terms Thank you. there. <laughs> I, I got that down. I got the. Um, ultra lit now ultra retina xdr display there you go that's it <laughs> and we also got the tandem oled display yeah yeah, yeah. but anyways the <laughs> adaptive true tone to uh flash mm -hmm. it 
takes multiple photos of your document at different flash levels and then puts it all together to eliminate any shadows you may mm -hmm. have, which is always a thing. Mm -hmm. If you have an overhead light source and you're trying to scan a document, you're immediately casting a shadow of it. Mm -hmm. So that's like a small problem that they're fixing and they mentioned AI right there. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of what I think we're gonna see here. But there's also been some rumors this week of new specific features coming to Siri in the mm -hmm. future and a Siri Pro. And one of them is summarizing of long texts or long articles. So Safari is reportedly getting what they're calling intelligent browsing. It allows users to generate short summaries of a web page. And then Siri is apparently going to get like the same feature, but in the messages app. Mm -hmm. So it can analyze long messages and generate good detailed responses to them, which I don't know about you. Sometimes I do get extremely long text from people, but this, <laughs> that's also funny. Like I'm summarizing someone's actual text to me. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to use that a lot, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> there's other things. I mean, this is already in Bing, right? You can already do this with mm -hmm. uh, Copilot, uh, uh, Gemini does this. Well, I mean, all the LLMs will do this kind yeah. of summary feature for you already, but this is, you know, building it into the system. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we talk about Bing or, or Chrome on mobile, any, any of these things, users of those on the iPhone anyway, are minuscule compared to people who use Safari. Almost everyone just is using Safari. They're not downloading extra browsers or not downloading extra apps to, to browse the web. So if you start to integrate this into Safari on not just the mobile side, but on Macs as well. Yeah, this is, this is probably the easiest way for Apple to start integrating large language models because it's it's something that the technology has already done for what in AI terms is a long time, which is a year and a half, two years it's been able to do this, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not, they're not breaking any kind of new ground here. They're just really catching up to the tech that's already there. Yeah, and this also mentions spotlight enhancements. So it said it can work across contacts and calendar mm -hmm. to generate a response. I'm imagining that that means you can use the same spotlight search field, but actually just type a question as opposed to like thinking about your files and thinking yeah. about stuff like that. And it would actually do well. But the bigger thing with all of this is that it runs on device. That's Apple's whole MO here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely what they're trying to go for. So apparently summaries that are more intense might require server side processing, mm -hmm. but apparently it's gonna be on device. When even if you just have to offload a little to the cloud and can keep most on device, mm -hmm. right? You, it's the speed, speed's the name of the game here. Yeah. And why did uh, Humane and Rabbit just get destroyed in all these reviews, especially the Humane side? Yeah. Um, that delay in interacting with an LLM is pure, it's just unacceptable to people. It's unacceptable to people. It makes it lame and not cool, you mm -hmm. know? So the more they can do on the device, the more they can shorten that response time, the better. This seems like something well within Apple's technical ability to implement and do. I This, this is almost the safest bet of what Apple's AI tools are going to be able to do, right? Because yeah. this is just, yeah, like obviously uh, summarize stuff, natural language, better search features for whatever you want to call what Spotlight does. Yeah, easy. Mm -hmm. Some other things out there that are sim similar to this functionality, there's one called Arc Browser, and this does this today. It's like a streamlined browser with an ad blocker, and it does summarizing with AI. So there's already an app for iOS and Mac that you can get. But a lot of people kind of report that these summaries aren't necessarily good enough, like for when you're really trying to dive into the information. So if it's a YouTube video with a lot of details, that summary needs to be good. And I guess a detail I can think of is I'm oftentimes watching like an interview with Elon Musk mm -hmm. because I have my whole Tesla channel. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in the middle of that interview, he drops one little seed that's like, oh, okay, that's the whole thing. Like, that's my whole next video that I'm gonna talk about. And summaries like this, even though it's an hour and a half Elon video, and I could save a lot of time and a lot of pausing and a lot mm -hmm. of thinking on his part, because he's a very slow communicator in that <laughs> regard, it would potentially miss those things. Sure. So that that's the fear here, and I'm curious if Apple's gonna try to fix that. Well, this is the problem with doing on-device stuff, mm -hmm. right? Is that If you're doing it on-device, you can teach this thing to, Call out, pull out key points, turn things into bullet points, all that kind of stuff. But an on device, it can't really do the larger context stuff. Because what you would want, the dream version of the AI is, we'll use your example of a Elon Musk interview, is that you can tell it, hey, pull out something he said in here that was unique. 
or pull out mm. something he said in here that was impactful, mm -hmm. right? Like you use these kind of natural languages and a thing that a human would be really good at figuring out, especially yeah. if they were familiar with that space. An on-device AI, which is really a super advanced natural language summary machine, isn't going to be able to pull that context. That's where you need something that goes up to the cloud or something that has access to more information that's been trained on this huge data set that's available. And then it can maybe really get that context because it could go, oh, well, I've seen every Elon Musk interview. I know he's never talked about this before. Yeah. Boom. Here's what you're looking for. And that's the kind of thing. It's just that the data requirements for that are just with our current level of technology cannot happen on device. Mm -hmm. That's going to have to go to the cloud. And so, yeah, while these things are nice and do have this practical value, it's still just like a plus up version of kind of entry level tech we already have. Yeah. It's not that real cool AI thing where you're, you know, fully talking to it and it's thinking and giving you a response. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting when you brought up the rabbit pin mm -hmm. or the humane pin and the rabbit R1 um, and all the issues we're seeing there. Mm -hmm. Apple apparently with this whole Ajax and Siri Pro thing, mm -hmm. the report specifically says Apple is gearing it towards that, saying by creating an AI infused version of Siri with on-device processing, Apple hopes to overshadow many existing implementations of generative AI, especially AI themed physical products. Mm -hmm. So they're absolutely aiming this, like let's build this fully into the iPhone so that you just want your iPhone. And it's just another feature of an iPhone as opposed to you wanting any other device. Right, and I use the, we use the example that uh, Marquez Brownlee did in his Humane uh, review where he pointed their, I guess it was stuck term or whatever, his pin to him. He's looking at his cyber truck and he asks what this is. And in the time it took the pin to figure it out, he pulls out his phone, he uses Google Lens, and it pulls out what it is. But you could streamline that with a, you know, an effective AI interface. Imagine just holding up your iPhone and going, what's in front of me? Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it's, and like, you know, it's doing what Google, what you're manually doing with Google Lens, essentially. What the iPhone in some ways already does with the smart photo feature where you can like see what type of plant you're looking at mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. If you just integrate all that into an LLM so you can talk to it naturally. It spits it out naturally. It uses its uh, transformers, context clues, all this kind of thing to know what you're talking about, what you're, the information that you're actually trying to get to. Yeah, it, it come out super fast right away. So Apple will absolutely destroy things like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like the, all these AI pens and stuff like that. I think it's kind of the equivalent of what we've seen with Translate apps. Like mm. you could get Google Translate and then they had, I think it was through Google Lens on the Translate app where you take a photo of something or point it at something and it translates it live. Mm. And then I remember I was in Europe and I opened what I thought was the Google Translate app and it's the Apple Translate app. Mm -hmm. And then I recognized that that same interface is just in the camera. Yep. So you, yeah, you just open the camera yeah. like from your home screen and then point it at something that needs translating and then there's a prompt. Mm -hmm. So that could be the exact type that, of integration. That's what I'm saying. A lot of this stuff is kind of built in already. People just don't know it's there because mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's not in the forefront of yeah. when you're in the camera app and using it for things. But I could see Apple really rethinking how the camera app operates because right now it's built on the premise of that it's a camera <laughs> that uh -huh. it's used to take photos, that memories that you're going to keep or whatever. But really, as this stuff comes forward, it's really going to be more a sensor for the AI. Hmm. And this seems like something, this is just connecting the dots to make this work. All this technology exists. The LLMs are good enough to do it. The, you know, the camera is good enough to do it. All the processing power is definitely going to be there, especially if we're looking at things like this M4 chip and mm -hmm. the, the new iPads. So, yeah, this is just about tying it all together and boom, this is going to work great. I'm very curious to see what chip they unveil for the new iPhones because the new iPhones will be coming after WWDC. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure it's an A series chip, mm -hmm. but Bionic, maybe they maybe they need to move by, beyond Bionic. Bionic like, is a good AI sounding thing, but it it's is. time to move beyond that. Maybe yeah. yeah. A19 Neurologic. I don't know. Mm, yeah. No. <laughs> that doesn't no, that work. That one didn't all. work. That one didn't so, work. Sorry, I tried. You tried. You tried. <laughs> but it's got a neural engine just like the new M4 yeah, chip yeah. has. Mm -hmm. And they're probably going to have a way to convince us because they're putting all of these AI features across all of their software. And so you mm -hmm. have the M4 chip over here that's able to do all these things, but you want to be able to do it on your iPhone too. Mm -hmm. And especially these things. So, yeah, I, I think they're going to convince us we need this new iPhone after WWDC. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and we kind of, like we, you were alluding to earlier, we're seeing that, going back to the Apple event, 
that differentiated between the iPad Air and the iPad Pro model, you could, if Apple really wanted to market that split, they really could have said, if you want the top end AI features, you need the Pro. And I could see them doing that with the phones, you know, mm -hmm. like, hey, if you want to do a lot of onboard AI, if you want whatever, they're going to come up with all kinds of features, uh, you know, generative stuff for the photos, uh, then you need this Pro model because it has the whatever the a <laughs> the neurological chip whatever whatever <laughs> whatever terrible name you yes. came up with but uh, yeah whatever that is with that said at this event tim cook at the end he was mm -hmm. very vague but he mentioned wwdc we have some very exciting things to show you we're excited mm -hmm. to show you all these things i think it's going to bring out the m4 ipad pros full potential and i think we also did get a hint it like you were saying earlier what they're going to show us and mm -hmm. how they're going to demo these things mm -hmm. they're not just going to say this, our iPhones now have better AI functionality. Mm -hmm. They're gonna say, when you use this app and do this specific thing that a lot of people do, here's how you can do it this much better. Mm -hmm. And like we said, we saw that with stems, we saw that with AI musicians, we saw that with background removal tools, with mm -hmm. document scanning. So they're kind of co they're covering creative bases, they're covering like normal daily use cases. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're gonna absolutely do and need to do. For sure, and and I'm looking forward. I can't. I do hope we get a crazy Siri demo where it's like this natural language conversation they're having with Siri, mm -hmm. right? And it, that's going to blow people. A lot of people just haven't really seen that. Like the general population, I don't think has done voice interaction with Chat GPT or any of these like more advanced AI engines, and they're going to be like, "Whoa, that's yeah. cool." Yeah. So beyond just things that are on text or summarizing an article or summarizing your messages and referencing your calendar and stuff. Yeah, being able to talk back and forth and actually get educated responses from Siri or Iris, I guess we should start calling it because we're probably setting off a million devices. Yep, I am. And <laughs> like you're saying, once Apple kind of markets these things that have been around but markets it to the average person, I think it's going to be pretty exciting. Absolutely. I guess we'll see, we'll see in a, another month or so. Yeah.